he's starting basically. Listen, I'm starting this interview, Lawrence Gartel, G Talk. I'm starting this uh, interview with Carolyn. And, and uh, we're talking about this machine that's about a hundred and something years old, and it does enlargements. And I said, well, you must have worked with Rodin. And she said, of course, our whole family worked with Rodin, talking about how they made the uh, enlargements for him. I I'm just overwhelmed. I, I, you know, it's, I'm, I'm starstruck for you and the machine. <laughs> and w so tell us, tell us a little bit about it. About the machine? Yes. So my great-grandfather made that machine about a hundred years ago. Um, it's a machine that enables us to enlarge whatever shape we want. So here we would put the original, and then here we put our block of styrofoam. And then this little point yes. follows the shape, and then this one is hot and carved into the styrofoam. So we follow and we turn it, so all, like both the model and the, uh, and the block turn simultaneously. And like this, we create an enlargement. And with those two triangles, we set the ratio of the enlargement. It can be one time, two times, five times. On this machine, five times is about the max. Yes. Then we have a much bigger one that we use for the debuffet that my father made that is all electrical. So you press buttons and everything turns. You don't need to actually make it turn on your own because it's so big. And we made the one for Houston, the one for uh, New York with that machine. Here we cannot build it because we need higher ceilings. Incredible. I'm going to stop here for a okay. moment, take a breath, because uh, i got to catch my breath. So, du Buffet, Rodin, all in the same sentence here in Miami. It's, it's overwhelming. Yep, and you can add Niki de Safal, Giacometti, Miro. Uh, we have the yeah, long list of names. You know, the, uh, I have to say that the sculpture inside, I thought, was a Niki de Saint Fall. Is it? Over there, yes. Yes, it is. The, oh that piece God. was made the year I was born. And oh then my. I restored it about 18 years later. I thought so. Okay, we're <laughs> going to go back and look at that my piece. Life is perfect. Yeah, I was pretty young and um, I'm working on it, but I'm a recovering perfectionist. So I'm conscious now that nothing can be perfect, but that we can try our best to get as close as possible. But at that time, my, my way of making them was too clean, just so you know. It would be my aunt that is the specialist of all the painting from Nikki. She's been making the, the paints for her for 35 years now, and, and she told me they're a little too strict. But it's still a pretty good piece, and it was outside for a while, so the mirrors got, um, you know, they lose the teeth yes. in the back. So I had to, we had to mark them and to get the shape, the exact shape, because they are all random. But yes. when you do restoration, you have to replace with the identical. Of course. So make them, you know, make a, a little template of each of them, then remove them, then glue the new ones, and redo all the joints. I knew I have seen this somewhere. So where was this? Um... This sculpture was shown in different uh, yeah, exhibitions, outside. but not for sale, because it's a private collection. Private collection. And, but she, she allowed people to show it. And now she doesn't really have the room for it back in New York, so we keep it here. Is she still alive? Nikki? No, that's no. a private collector. Ah, right, the owner right. of the yes, piece. Yes, no, yes, yes, yes. No, Nikki uh, died she in passed. 2002. Yes, yes. But before she, she died, uh, she made the things well. She built, she created a foundation that is um, yes. run by her niece, that his name is Bloom. Uh, and she also agreed with my family to make a, a certain amount of uh, additions that right. she approved from her being alive. From her life. And that, yes. but that provided and that's uh, work for like more. 10 more years. Oh my for God. The, that's the family. <laughs> Let's go back over to your uh, to Statue of Liberty because this is really quite that's a story. Yes, it really is. Tell us. So, this, especially this one, this one is really like the one that Bartoldi gave to um, all the people that either gave money or helped fabricating the, the Statue of Liberty in New York. And my great grandfather, with that beautiful machine that we just uh, showed you, yes. uh, participated in the enlargement of the statue. So he gave us one in, in terracotta, and then from there we made uh, a mold, a silicone mold, and an addition. And that's my first work in the studio. I made about 20 of those. And working the seams every time in the draping here that comes here. And, and then put the weight under, finished and clean, and then the painting was the, the painter job, but that was my first uh, casting project in the studio. A lot of details, I can tell you now, any jerkle application seems easy to me, because this is very hard. You have to be consistent in the thickness that you apply. Yes. But there is so much relief. How do you do that? You need to master the skill. 
Yes. And when you start with something difficult, it's good because then afterwards everything seems quite easy. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We're standing with the, you're not going to call these originals, but what do you want to? Those are editions of an original by Bartoldi. Editions of the original by Bartoldi. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Right here in Miami. And now it's public domain, so we are completely allowed to do that. Yeah, of course. Because we, and in the history of my family, not on wood, so far, no fake ones have been done through uh, our malls through your or anything. Mold. Like, we are very ethical on this. Or even someone comes, they say, oh, I want the same. No, sorry, we can't. Do you have the approval of the artist? No. Okay, we're cannot. talking about the Statue of Liberty. We're here with Rodin. Tell us about this piece, Carolyn, so this please. This one, uh, for the 100 year anniversary of the Statue of Liberty from New York, the Americans offered to friends a reproduction at one quarter of the original. So then we become this. Uh, the thing is, the, the head got damaged quite fast, and they asked my father to, to restore it, and he said it's beyond restoration, we have to make a mold to redo a new one, because you cannot salvage the, the existing one. So we end up with the mold of the head of the one in Paris, and we can make additions, so that's what we offer as well. Those are all for sale, by the way. We have I websites and everything, made with prices, and it can be in bronze as well. And so this we lend a lot for exhibition, anything has to do with American and France, you know, America yes. and France and all that. Yes. And then, so we have two, we have the mold, and then this one is the thinker in plaster. This is more for our private collection. We don't, we don't sell that. Yeah. But this is a plaster. It's not even resin. So you see it gets a little cheap, obviously. Uh, but that's the completely original. You can see the face, uh, the hair. It's the real thing. The, the proportions are good because we use the pentograph to enlarge it. And the Italians sometimes use uh, a technique where it's called the three points. And it's not because they use only three points in the space to get to the to expand. So you lose a lot of details. All the inside, you don't have access to that with that technique. So they are not as precise. And it's okay because if you do in marble or in bronze, you can always retouch them and you have the original next to it so you can modify it. Once we us do a silicone mold and a fiberglass cast, it is what it is. You cannot go drastic right. and change the angle of the arm. We cannot do that. It means we have to cut, move it, we put fiber. So it's a whole process. We always finish the models as best as we can. So when we make the mold, all the addition come out nice. And it's all made by hand. Uh, we use tools and machinery, but there is not a production, a factory at all. No. Everything is done by hand. So it's a lot of quality, but it's a lot of time and, and budget as well. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then we store all the molds because the artists usually don't have the space. So yeah. half of this one is for all the molds that we store. And before we destroy anything, we always ask the approval of the artists. We tear down the skins, we break the, sh the plaster shelves to make sure nobody can use it afterwards to make new ones, you know, that would not be approved. Right. That's also an enlargement. That's the hand of a uh, French artist named Hervé de Rosa. And we molded his hand, and he loved the shape, and then we, we enlarged it because he liked the idea. So. Incredible. Yes. And those are the columns for the Mondrian Hotel in South Beach. Uh, we made all the columns, the bells, and also yes. the bar, and the, the staircase, the under of the staircase, all this were done, was done by the, our yeah. studio. Wow. And the feet here, and the so legs. So that's the artist the, with the hand, it's the same artist. Yes. And those are the legs that go under the, the house, and it's called the Crack House. It was in front of uh, the Bass Museum uh, a couple of years ago, when he was uh, living here. It's, uh, it's fun. It's like the guy is coming out of the, the house and cracking it. <laughs> I think I remember that, actually. It was in, in the garden yeah. for a while, yeah. for like two, three years. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's also Rodin. And this one is fiberglass. <laughs> wow. Just fabulous. So, when you, obviously you were born into this, do you have brothers and sisters that are? I have a brother, but he, well, and many cousins, but so far I'm the only one that got really into it. Incredible. 
Tell us about uh, Okay, so that, that's not the typical things that we do, but it's from one of our clients. She's a designer. Uh, we made a few pieces for them, but then the, the, the owner have this collectible, but the feet broke. Ah. Because it's like made in China and they just have a little piece of uh, square tube and it doesn't hold. With the weight it cracked, so we took it here to fix the, um, the foot and then we realized there was also a crack in here. So we opened it, refilled it with epoxy and then now I'm doing the, the paint by hand, the black, and then it's ready to go. Unbelievable. Carolyn at uh, Halicon Studios here in Miami. Uh, this is just unbelievable stuff. And that's just a restoration that. as well. This crocodile, this huge alligator. This yes. Um, was made like in Poland by the artist, but uh, they didn't put any structure inside. Ah. To that size in fiberglass, you need to reinforce with uh, a structure. Otherwise it'll crack. Because it's flexible. Sure. So just with his own weight here, it would crack all the way. Yes. So what we had to do is open huge windows all the way here, both sides, and the same for those all the way here on both sides and inside we put a big structure so that is in stainless steel held by fiberglass onto the piece from the inside and then close everything back same so you don't see even the lines i mean you cannot tell that it was ever never open. no never. never tell and now it's fine and incredible now in here it doesn't move anymore because the structure goes from the back foot in, into the the head into the mouth to make sure that is uh integrity is strong Incredible. It's like a boat. You don't do just a boat that big. You have a, a structure inside. Yes. Same principle here. Incredible. <laughs> All right. We're going to go back inside. So your family's been in this for how many years? Uh -huh. oh, I don't know exactly. I think it's about 125, 130 years. It's from my great-grandfather, um, who um, on my two great-grandfathers. Uh, one was a sculptor. But it was very difficult to, to live from sculptures, so he worked also for other artists to make enlargements. And uh, he met um, a mechanic who, um, at this time, and um, they, they, the, together they built a pantograph, which is the one you saw yes. before, which was built so by uh, my other uh, great grandfather. And um, so, but it was really good and uh, uh, did good job and uh, took some of the best artists uh, in those times, um, like Carpo. Uh, Carpo was uh, number one at this time. Didn't work that much for a while. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. uh, mostly Carpo, and, um, after the time, a lot of uh, very famous artists uh, with my, my grandfather, who was uh, also very good and very precise in his work on my, my father too and uh, try to keep the level <laughs> the integrity <laughs> and, uh, now how does it feel to have your daughter work with you now in this looks it's that good. makes a continuity in yeah. the history you see as i said we we, we surf on contemporary art yeah because uh, capo now is a classic but in uh, 1870, he, he was a bit uh, revolutionary uh, yes. uh, uh, artist, uh, unlike Rodin. Rodin was uh, really uh, making something uh, nobody was understanding because it, it was too modern, and, uh, and, and now it's a classic. <laughs> so I, I must tell you something. So I am considered the father of digital art for 40 years. Wow, congratulations. And, <laughs> and, and I must come here and make something innovative with you. This oh, is what I do. come, Did as as a contemporary, like you said, they start out contemporary <laughs> and they become a classic. What yeah, what a great thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just incredible. And you see, like you see uh, Nikki de Safar, yes. when she did a Nana or or uh, she, she, she was yeah. uh, putting uh, guns with ink, ink or, or on uh, uh, Vierge Marie or things like that. She's, people say it's a scandal. And, uh, yes, it's, yes, uh, yes. It's incredible. And, uh, and now it's, it's a classic. <laughs> it, it, she's in every, every uh, museum. book uh, every of book. Uh, art history. Yes, um, yes. Uh, and, yes. And, uh, and those pieces, um, this piece I did it in 1985. Yes. And, uh, I restored it um, five, uh, Caroline, say, <laughs> five or six years ago. Right. And uh, that I remember, uh, I, I sold the cast to uh, uh, Nikki for 50,000 francs, which 
I would say it's about five thousand dollars. And now a piece like that worth uh, one million dollars. <laughs> unbelievable! It's unbelievable. Uh, so, it's unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you a small story about yes. the thinker of Roda. You said Please. you were impressed to see the, yes. the thinker, which is a, a classic. On me, I like better. Uh, so the, the kiss, because the, this uh, sculpture is a better sculpture, because the um, the thinker when he uh, he did it, he did it in. Um, 78 centimeters yes. uh, in clay and then plaster mold, plaster cast. And uh, he, he, he wanted to enlarge it. So he did the sculpture at this scale. And uh, at this scale, the sculpture was good. Lo looks really good. And when uh, he, he ordered the enlargement, because he, he had an order from the city of Paris, uh, when he enlarged it, if you, if you look at the sculpture, it's not that good. It's too bulky. And, uh, and compared to that one, yes. and uh, if you go to the Musée Rada in Paris, you have the Bourgeois de Calais, he did the same thing, uh, on uh, about uh, 80 centimeters tall. The, all, all the bodies look very thin, and when they enlarge, they look perfectly proportional. Uh, so that's what he understood from the mistake he did on the thinker. Wow. <laughs> but nobody said that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that fabulous story.